and uh, thank you for coming to Bible study tonight. Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, believers who are dedicated to the study of God's word. And uh, we thank God for preaching. We thank God for worship. But this is time for study. Time to go a little bit deeper into the word of God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this night for your goodness, for your grace, for your love, for your kindness, uh, for your graciousness. We just give you glory for who you are. And God, uh, we come before you tonight just uh, seeking a deeper uh, revelation in your word, seeking to know you deeper, to know you more, more intimately. God, we just want to know you in the power of your uh, suffering and the fellowship of your, in the, in the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. So Father, we just ask uh, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to have free reign and free course tonight. Uh, as I am the teacher, uh, as I am the facilitator, you are the teacher. So, Father, we ask that you teach us, let the Holy, Holy Ghost teach us tonight, and that we may draw closer to you. Touch everyone under the sound of my voice that's in this Bible study tonight. Open the eyes of their understanding, oh God. Enlighten us that we may know the breadth and the depth and the width and the height of your love for us. Father, forgive us of every sin, word, thoughts, and deeds, creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit, and have your way in this Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, glory to God. I'm so glad. Each of you all are here tonight and more are chiming in and uh, we welcome everybody to the Bible study tonight, everybody. And uh, let's see, I think we might even have, uh, I'm, I'm on my phone here, so um, glory to God. Well, get your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one, let's just go over a quick review. And then we're going to jump right into Bible study tonight. It's been hard to get past these first couple verses because there's so much, so much revelation, so much meat in these verses. So get a good pen, get a good notepad and take some good notes. I'll try to end in enough time to take some questions. Um, but uh, this is exciting. This, this, is, this uh, study of God's word gets me excited when I start getting into the meat and the nuts and the bolts of what the Lord is saying to us through his word. I'm sorry. Okay, I heard someone say something. I didn't know if that was a question. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so we started out, we started out by talking about some, um, some history or historicity, if you will, of uh, the text. Um, it's never a good idea to take a text out of context. You always want to understand uh, the setting. You want to understand the backdrop, the background. You want to understand the place. You want to understand the culture of what was going on at the time so that you can understand what's being said to us and why it's being said and how it's being said, especially when you see those therefores in the Bible. When you see the therefore, you got to go back and research to find out what is it there for. All right. What is it there for? Um, so we talked about that. I don't want to go too deeply into review here because I got a lot of new information to cover. Um, Sister Stephanie or Elder Holloway, if one of you all could answer this question, do we have the previous two Bible studies posted or on our YouTube channel? Can you talk, talk about that a little bit? Yes, we do. We have um, both of them posted on Facebook. And okay, both. both of them are posted on YouTube as well, I believe. Um, okay, the church, the church YouTube channel. Yes. Okay, can you just tell everybody what that is, please, and how they can get to the YouTube channel? There may be some that don't have Facebook. So um, okay. can you just talk to us about that a little bit? Okay. Um, so Facebook is the... Um, uh, the... I guess when you go, when you, when you get on Facebook, you look up the voice church, you can mm -hmm. do it that way. And I'm sure it comes up in the search results. Um, and so you can find us that way. Um, I believe it's, uh, at the voice church MD, but okay. let me verify that, okay. uh, YouTube. Um, the same thing, if you, um, actually, I'll go ahead and um, post in the comments the link 
to the YouTube channel. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Yeah. If you could put the link to and Facebook. And I'll do the links to the, uh, yeah, to Facebook as well. Perfect, perfect. All right, everybody. So Sister Stephanie is going to do that for us tonight. It's going to put in the, in the chat section of this Zoom. She'll put the links to the YouTube and the links to the Facebook for the church where you can access the previous Bible studies, the previous two Bible studies that we've had about the book of Ephesians. So you can be caught up on everything that we're talking about, okay? All right, so the city is Ephesus. Um, the book is split into two sections. Uh, chapters one through three is about uh, our position in Christ. And chapters four through six is about how we operate in that position. I want to emphasize that right there because that is where uh, that gives you the framework for understanding this book. Chapters one through three is about our position in Christ, who we are in Christ. It is critical. It is critical. It is imperative. It is uh, absolutely necessary that every believer comes into a revelation and an understanding of who they are in Christ. Amen goes right there. All right. And then chapters uh, four through six teach us about how to operate, how we are to function, how we are to flow, how we are to move about, how we are to, um, to, uh, to maneuver uh, within our position in Christ. All right. Teaches us. Remember, we use an example of the electric wheelchair. All right. We're seated in the chair. That's, the, that's chapters one through three. All right, we're seated with him in the heavenly places. And then chapters four through six is about how do you move? How do you, how do you maneuver that chair? How do you uh, get around in that chair? All right, so that's what we talked about. And then last week, we talked about the epilogue, which was Ephesians chapter one, verse one and two. All right, and we talked about um, uh, defining those words and breaking those words down. And, and uh, we talked about how Paul is an apostle uh, of Jesus Christ, which speaks of the source of his apostleship, the source of uh, the source of who he's called to be. All right, the source, the source, the source, the source, the focus, and the identity of who he was was wrapped up in one place. Everybody, highlight that, circle it, underscore it, uh, asterisk, whatever you got to do to it. The source, the focus, and the identity of who he was was wrapped up in one place, one man, Jesus the Christ. And he says this over and over again, over and over again. So we talked about that on last week, all right? And we talked about so many different things on last week. Uh, we, we talked about grace and peace. We broke that down. Hopefully you'll never see grace and peace the same way ever again. <laughs> uh, grace and peace is powerful. It's powerful. It's, it's uh, Paul's literal way of addressing Jews and Gentiles, all right? Uh, uh, peace was the way that the Jews greeted one another. Grace is the way that Gentiles greet one another. And Paul is greeting everybody, basically letting them know that this thing is for everybody. All right, grace and peace. We talked about all those elements uh, that, that come within both those things. Look at the, the formal lesson to catch all of that, all right? All right, all right, all right. Now tonight, tonight, let's read uh, Ephesians chapter one. And I'm going to read verse number one, two, and three. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to get past verse three tonight. <laughs> but uh, let's see how, let's see what we can do. All right, verse, Ephesians chapter one, verse one, verse two, verse three. The scripture reads, the scripture reads, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse three, this, this is our new territory here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Let me read that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I got to read it again because I read it too fast. Let me read it one more time. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, help me, help me, help me. Listen, I, I want to do something here. I'm excited and I haven't even started teaching. That's a shame. Lord have mercy. <laughs> let me go. Let me let me let me read that to you in the amplified uh, translation of the Word of God. It says, "May blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual given by the Holy Spirit blessing." <laughs> in the heavenly realm oh my lord that's exciting to me tonight that's exciting all right let's break this thing down and let's see what the lord is saying to us tonight uh we've already talked about the book being split in half and the first part is the theological section and the second part is the practical section all right ephesians chapter one uh verses three through fourteen but I'm going to start at verse 3, and I don't, I don't think I'm going to get past this verse, so I might as well not even try. I'm just going to go ahead and break down this, this verse 3. But verse 3 through 14, for your notes, for, for your note-taking, verse 3 through 14 is what we call the blessing section. All right? Everybody write that down. The blessing section. All right? Somebody put that in the notes or in the, in the chat. The, bless, the blessing section. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 14. And this section is all about the blessings that God has for you. Now, somebody besides me should be getting excited already because what I'm telling you is God has blessings for you. <laughs> so I, I'm going to break that down for you tonight so you can understand what that means uh, so that you won't just look at that and read past that and, and, not, and not give it a proper response my goodness amen now now this is not this is not uh this blessing section is not really a, a full list but it's a grand overview of what we are granted in jesus christ all right so it's an overview what we are granted in jesus christ all right now this blessing section this blessing section verses 3 through verse 14 is also split into sections all right, write this down in your notes. Verse three through verse six talks to us about the blessings we have in the Father. All right, verse seven through verse 12 talks to us about the blessings we have in the Son. And verses 13 and 14 talk to us about the blessings we have in the Spirit or in the Holy Spirit. All right, once again, verse 3 through 6, blessings we have in the Father. Verse 7 through 12, blessings we have in the Son. Verses 13 and 14, blessings we have in the Holy Spirit. All right? All right, let's break it down. Let's break it down. The idea of blessing, let me sit this to the side here. The idea of blessing in the Word of God in the scripture is a significant idea. We see this idea all throughout. Make sure you keep your Bibles because we're going to turn to a couple of scriptures here. All throughout scriptures, you see this idea of blessing. Matter of fact, let's go back to Genesis 1. All right? Y'all know I always teach you that uh, everything that God does, he did it in the beginning. And you can always find it in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1. Verse number 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. This is, the way, this is where God creates man, okay? God creates man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them and said unto them. Y'all see that right there? Y'all see that right there? The very first thing God does after he makes man is what? He blesses him. 
<laughs> yup, yup. Don't skip over that. Don't skip over that. That's big right there. All right. And he and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. All right. So I'll stop it right there. Uh, keep your finger in Ephesians. All right. And write that down. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 27 and 28. All right. That's a very big, 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 big uh, thing to note because the first thing, I'm trying to get my pages to turn here. The first thing God does after he creates man is he blesses them. All right. If you look at the story of Abraham, God blesses him and he gives him a promise with the blessing. All right. I'm just showing you how the bless this blessing principle, this blessing idea is all throughout scripture. And it goes on from generation to generation to generation to generation. Uh, the story of Jacob and Esau. Y'all know that story. Jacob steals. What does he steal? He steals the blessing. <laughs> he steals the blessing from his brother uh, for a bowl of soup or a bowl of lentils is, is actually what it was. Um, so he steals the blessing. This principle of blessing is real big. In Numbers chapter 22, read it in your own time. Numbers chapter 22 there's a story about uh, a guy named Balak, all right? Somebody's phone is off mute. Uh, there's a story about a, a guy named Balak. He's the king of Moab, and Balak hires this other guy named Balaam, all right? He hires Balaam, and he hi the reason he hires Balaam is because he's tired of the Israelites prospering. He's tired of them getting blessed, and he hires Balaam to literally curse the Israelites, and Balaam literally goes to curse them. And every time he goes to curse them, a blessing comes out. <laughs> Ooh, that's powerful right there. So he's trying to curse the Israelites. And every time he does it, a blessing comes out. So I want to talk about this principle of blessing. All right. It's more than just mere words. It's, we're not just talking about uh, uh, the bl blessing of the words. All right. Uh, write this down. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter two Verse 28. Matter of fact, let's turn to it and read it. Let's turn to it and read it. Luke chapter 2, verse number 28. Look what happens here. This is the birth of Jesus right here. All right? Even after Jesus was born, this principle comes into place. Uh, the Bible says, Then he took him up in his arms. And blessed God. Do y'all see that right there? <laughs> and he blessed God and he said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy words. According to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. So this is the story of a guy named Simeon. And Simeon prayed a prayer, and he asked God to not let him leave the earth until he saw the Christ child, until he saw Jesus. And God granted that request. And when Simeon sees Jesus, he picks up the child, he picks up the child, and he blesses the child. <laughs> he blesses him. This is a big, big principle all throughout uh, the scripture. All right, so uh, 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 he picks him up, he blesses him, and blessing in the Bible is significant. All right, verse number three in Ephesians chapter one is the basis for all blessings that Paul is going to speak about moving forward. It's the basis. So let's pay attention to this, uh, to this Ephesians chapter three. All right, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter one, verse number three. All right, I keep turning away from it. Let me earmark it right here so I can get back to it quickly. Glory to God. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3, it's the, it's the backdrop for all of the blessing that Paul's going to speak about. Everything Paul's going to say up until verse uh, 14 is all in verse number 3. Go back to that verse. Go back to that verse. All right? It's many blessings he's talking about, but it's all really just one big blessing. Let's look at it again. Blessed be the God. It starts out with blessed. Y'all see that? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us. There it is again with all spiritual blessings. There it is again in heavenly places in Christ. Y'all see that word blessing three times <laughs> in that verse? So let's break that down. Let's find out what that means, all right? It's, three it's there three, three times for a reason. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first time. Who has blessed us, that's the second time, with every spiritual blessing, that's the third time, all right? Now, this word blessing, I've taught you, you got to go back to the Greek translation to find out what this word means. This word blessing comes from a Greek word, but it has three different tenses of the word. When I say tenses, meaning the first time it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When it says that, it's talking from the adjective's perspective, all right? It's describing something. The second time, who has blessed us, it's a verb. The third time, with every spiritual blessing, it's a noun. So the first time, it's an adjective. The second time, it's a verb. And the third time, it's a noun. But they all come from the same Greek word. One is an adjective, one's a verb, one is a noun. Here's the Greek word. It's eulogio. Eulogio. E-U-L-O-G-E-O -E is the word. Or eulogio is what, how some would pronounce it. Eulogio or eulogio. The E-U means good. And the L-O-G-E-O -E means word or good word. All right? So good word <laughs> is how that word is breaking down. All right? Blessing. It's, it's good word. All right? Good words being declared is a, is a better way to uh, break it down for you. All right? You... E-U-L-O-G-E-O. -E it means logo. That's where we get the word logos. The logos word comes from this word, uh, eulogio or eulogio. All right? It's also where we get the word eulogy. You've heard that word before. All right? Eulogy is what, what they do at a funeral. And what does that mean? It just simply means to speak well of or to speak blessing to brag on the one that has deceased, all right? It's talking about blessing, all right? And this word means to bless or to praise. Every time this word blessing is used in the New Testament, let's start with the first one, as an adjective. Every time it's used as an adjective, this word refers to God himself, all right? It's describing God. The only one that is worthy of being described as blessed is God himself. Lord, have mercy. There's nobody else that can be described as being blessed other than God. All right? This is important to note. It's important to note. The only one that can be described as being blessed is God himself. Nobody is worthy of worship like God is. Nobody is worthy of blessing like God is. God himself. Now, watch this part. God himself is the source of his own blessedness. Write that down. He's the source of his own blessedness. In other words, he lives in a state of blessing. <laughs> his atmosphere is blessing. His aura is blessing and praise. When we praise him, we declare what he already is. Lord, have mercy. God is good. He's merciful, he's loving, he's grace-filled, uh, he, and he doesn't want us to stay the way we are. God is not some angry God or some angry superpower that's waiting to get us back when we sin. He hates sin, but his desire is to make us holy. So get the picture, get the picture. God is blessed. His environment is blessed. His atmosphere is blessed. So when the scripture speaks of blessing as an adjective, it's talking about God and his, his realm, his, his atmosphere, and his environment. He is blessed. So when it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's talking about who he is. You and I are not worthy to be blessed, but God is worthy to be blessed. Lord, have mercy. And he is blessed. God is blessed. God is blessed. Let's take it a little bit, a step further. Let's go to the second time he says it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first time, adjective, who has blessed us. 
This is the verb. This is the verb. All right. Let me, let me take you back to English class just a little bit. It's, it's actually, it's a little bit, a little bit more detailed um, description of this is, is, uh, is what they call in English a participle. I know some of y'all don't re remember what that is. <laughs> All right. But a, a participle is that which describes and give content to the main verb. To the main verb all right so the participle gives content and it gives and it gives description to the main verb but there's only one problem here look at the verse look at the verse blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings all right so if it gives content and it gives context to the main verb if it gives description to the main verb you got to have a main verb. But the problem is there's no main verb in here. <laughs> there's no main verb. So what does that mean? All right. Uh, 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 the, the main verb then has to be the word has. H-A-S. God has blessed us. That's how, that has to be the main verb. All right. Or who hath. Your, your King James says hath. H-A-T-H. That simply means has. H-A-S. All right. That's what that means. All right, so has is the main verb, and this blessing factor, it gives, it gives a description, and it gives content to the main verb. All right, God has blessed us. So get the picture. Let me give you the picture. As God sits in blessing, as he is blessing, his environment is blessing, his atmosphere is blessing, then he does something because of his atmosphere. And what he does is he speaks forth blessing out of his atmosphere. Lord have mercy. Literally out of him, God speaks himself and he causes us and tells us to be blessed because he's blessed. Oh my God. I don't know if y'all catching this tonight. Amen. So we are blessed by God. Watch this. Write this down. We are blessed by God with God. <laughs> he blesses us and he blesses us with himself. Do y'all see this? My God, he's blessing us and that causes us to give thanks and praise and blessing back to him. So literally, he is blessing, he's in blessing, he speaks blessing and it causes us to speak blessing right back to him. Lord have mercy. Do y'all see the circular principle of this blessing thing? He is blessing. He speaks blessing, and he causes us to bless his name. That's what we mean when we say, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. We bless him because he is blessing, and he's spoken blessing to us. And out of that blessing, just like because we are made in the image of God. I just read that for you in Genesis chapter 1. We're made in the image of God. So what we do out of our heart, the mouth speaks. When we are blessed, it causes us to speak blessing back to him. Because he's blessed, it causes him to speak blessing to us. Because we're blessed, it causes us to speak blessing back to him. Because he's blessed, it causes him to speak blessing. Y'all don't catch this, Lord. It causes him to speak blessing to us. And because we're blessed, we speak blessing back to him. And it's blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Do y'all see this right now? My God. Woo! Somebody just said, I got blessings on blessings. I got blessings on blessings. This is exciting me tonight. And God blesses us, and a blessed God blesses us, and through us, he blesses himself. <laughs> the blessing spoken, spoken upon us causes us to bless him. Y'all see that? It's blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings, and it's a circular principle that happens. All right, so we got the first one. We got the first one, which is, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the adjective. And then he blessed us, who has or hath blessed us. That's the verb. Now let's take it to the third one. The third time he says it, it's a noun. It's a noun, all right? The third time he says it, with every spiritual blessing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. So this is a thing. The blessing is a noun, and there's only, watch this, write this down. There's only one blessing. I know when we speak of blessings, sometimes we refer to our houses and our cars and our jobs and the things that God has given to us. But really, the truth be told, there's only one blessing. 
and every other blessing comes out of this one blessing. I need y'all to catch this. I need y'all to catch this. So this is a noun. Verse 4 through verse 14, it speaks about the aspects or the features of this one blessing. So then, what's the obvious question? What is the blessing, Bishop? <laughs> Look at it. Look at the verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. There it is. Good God Almighty. It's in Christ. The blessing is Christ himself. That's the blessing. Glory to God. All right? It's in Christ. If you're in Christ, that's the blessing. Our blessing is in Christ. And that is, all right, don't miss this. Don't miss this. We break, we're breaking this whole thing down. The blessing is in Christ. Being in Christ is the blessing. So Christ, Christ, please catch this, is not Jesus' last name. Lord, have mercy. I know you call him Jesus Christ, but that's not his last name. Christ is the anointing. Good God, I'm going to jump up from this chair right now. Amen. The blessing is the anointing. Lord, have mercy. When you have the, the Christ anointing operating in your life, you got the blessing. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you tonight? That means that every other thing, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, every other thing that you could possibly need is in Christ. Somebody just say it's in Christ. It's in Christ. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. It's his anointing. Christ is the anointing of Jesus. Christ is the power of Jesus. Christ is the enablement of Jesus. And his anointing, it's his anointing that he earned. It's his anointing that he paid the price for. It's his power. It's the spirit of God that's resident in Jesus that makes things happen. Lord, have mercy. That's what Christ is, all right? The healings that he did, that's the Christ. The miracles that he did, that's the Christ. The resurrection, Lord, have mercy, that's the Christ. The forgiveness that he offers, that's the Christ. The justification that we receive, that's the Christ. The sanctification, that's the Christ. The regeneration, that's the Christ. The glorification, that's the Christ. The shift, that's the Christ. The change that, that's been made in your life, that's the Christ. It's the power of God. The scripture says Christ in you, the hope of glory. Woo! Lord have mercy. Christ, now let me break that down. I'm getting too excited. Let me come back down. Let me come back down. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me tell you what. Glory is a person. <laughs> glory has a name. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? And the name of glory is Jesus. Woo-hoo! Christ in you, the hope of Jesus. Y'all got to break that down and see the scripture this, tonight. Lord, have mercy. So Christ is in you, literally, the hope of glory. His name is Jesus. And we call his name Jesus, but it's the Christ that lives in you. Lord, help us in this place tonight. Let me try that again. We call his name Jesus, but it's the Christ that lives in you. It's the anointing that lives in your heart. It's the power that lives in your heart. So then, if that's the case, what is the difference between Jesus and Christ? I'm so glad you asked me that question tonight. I'm so glad you asked me that question tonight. What is the difference between Jesus and Christ? I'm going to give you the difference right now. I'm going to give you the difference right now. All right? Write this down. Write this down. One gives you access, and the other one gives you the anointing. Lord, have mercy. The name of Jesus gives you the access. Lord, have mercy. And the Christ gives you the anointing. My God. And when you pray in the name of Jesus, whoo, I'm getting excited here. You get access into the anointing or into the power, the same power that Jesus had that got him up from that grave. 
through the name of Jesus, you get access into that power. I don't know if this is blessing nobody but me tonight, but I'm sure getting blessed from this. Lord, have mercy. The name of Jesus gives you the access, and the Christ gives you the power. That's why I say it's not Jesus. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. Y'all don't believe nothing I say. Go, go to Acts chapter 7. Go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I want you to see this for yourself. Acts chapter 7. Y'all know I get excited when I teach the word. Lord, have mercy. Acts chapter 7. Uh, I, I want you to see this. Go to verse number uh, 54. Acts chapter 7, verse number 54. Listen to this scripture right here. Let me read it to you. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, this is the story of the stoning of Stephen, who was the first Christian martyr. He was the first one that gave his life, other than Jesus, for what he believed. All right? Now, watch this. They were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, that Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, Lord have mercy, he looked up steadfastly into heaven, and what did he see? He saw the glory of God. I told you glory has a name. Good God Almighty. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Don't, don't, don't lose me here. Pay attention. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man. There it is. There it is. Jesus is a man right there. He sees the son of man standing on the right hand of God. I got to stop right there. Let me help y'all understand something. This is how I know that it's the Christ that dwells in you and not Jesus that dwells in you. Jesus gives you access to the Christ. Jesus is in heaven. That's where Stephen saw him. He was on the right hand of the throne of God, and he's the man upstairs. So Jesus ascended. He went back into the heavens, and he left his power, Lord have mercy, to dwell in you and me. And that's the Christ. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, Lord have mercy, being full of the power of God, being full of the Christ, being full of the anointing. He saw Jesus in heaven, and it was the Christ that was in him. So keep on going, keep on going. Verse 56, and he said, behold, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city, and they stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus. This is what Stephen is saying. He's calling upon God, and he's saying, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, who is in heaven, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep or he died. Lord, have mercy. I need y'all to see what happened in this verse right here. Because the Christ was resident in Stephen, because the power was resident in, Lord, have mercy. Does anybody see? It? Because the power was resident in Stephen, he was able to do what Jesus was able to do. Lord, have mercy. And he even died without being offended that they were stoning him. Lord, have mercy. What did Jesus say on the cross? Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. He was able to do that because the power, the anointing was resident in his heart. And the same power that was resident in Jesus. I'm trying not to preach. Don't tell me to preach. Lord, have mercy. The same power that was resident in Jesus is resident in you. Now watch what you can do. You can make it through any situation 
when the power of Christ is resident in your heart. You can make it through any offense when the power of Christ is in your heart. You can forget anybody when the power of Christ is in your heart. You can get through any difficult day when the power of Christ is in your heart. Lord, have mercy. Somebody just say, Christ is in my heart. Christ is in my heart. Christ is in my heart. Jesus gives you the access, but the Christ gives you the power. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you this night? Good God Almighty. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. All right, let me come on back down. Let me come on back down. So we're talking about this blessing. We're talking about this blessing. The Christ, do y'all hear what I'm saying? The Christ is where the blessing is. <laughs> the Christ is where the noun is. The Christ is where the empowerment is. The Christ is where the enablement is. The Christ is where the indwelling is. That's how, back in the day, when we used to tarry for the Holy Ghost and call on the name of Jesus, you know why people got filled with the Holy Ghost? Because they were calling on the access. Lord, have mercy. The name of Jesus gave them access into the power of Jesus, and they got filled with the Holy Ghost by calling on the name. Lord, have mercy. The name gives you the access, but the, but the Christ gives you, Lord, have mercy, the anointing. My God, I hope y'all catching this tonight. My God, that power allows us to do what we cannot do on our own. So God literally gives us the blessing which is the Christ, which is the anointing that comes to us through the name of Jesus. Anybody know there's power in the name of Jesus? Now, now you perhaps you might look at that differently now. When we say there's power in the name, <laughs> that means that the name itself gives you access to the anointing. Good God Almighty. There's power in the name. When you call on the name, when I say access, do y'all know what I mean when I say access? It's, it's like a key that opens up a door. When you say Jesus, it opens the door to healing. When you say Jesus, it opens the door to provision. When you say Jesus, it opens the door to peace. When you say Jesus, it opens the door to comfort. My God, when you say Jesus, it opens the door to whatever it is that you need because God has given you the blessing. Lord, have mercy. And that blessing is in Christ. I hope somebody's catching this tonight. Oh, my God. All things that we need comes to us through our blessing. It comes to us through our blessing. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm almost finished. I knew I wasn't going to get past this verse tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I'm getting excited here. Uh, 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 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory. Lord, have mercy. And for, I told you glory is a person. Every time you see the word glory in the New Testament, replace it with the word Jesus. Ah, because glory is Jesus. Glory has a name, and his name is Jesus. My God, Lord, have mercy. So all things have been given to everything that pertains to life and godliness comes to us through Jesus, through the access that his name gives us, and his access, his name gives us access into his anointing. We have the power of God, watch this, in Christ Jesus. <laughs> the power of God in Christ Jesus. That's what Christ Jesus literally means. It, when, you hear, when you hear the word Christ Jesus, Replace those two words with anointing access. <laughs> anointing access. You got access to the power. You got access to the anointing. You got access to whatever you need through the name of Jesus. Life and godliness is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is literally the key to everything we need. Every other blessing, every other blessing that you could possibly need comes through Christ. Let me close it down. Let me close it down because I want to take some questions tonight. It's already 748. My God. Don't handle God like you handle a genie in a lamp. 
or like you handle uh, a clerk in a store. All right. You know, it, let, let me give you an example. I'm just going to paint a picture here. Uh, let's just say you, you, you go to the store, you need something from the store. You walk in the store, you ask the clerk, you say, you know, I, I need some love, clerk. I need some love. So the, the clerk says, all right, I'm going to go get you some love. Gives you the love. You walk out the store. And then you're happy with the love for a minute. And then you realize, oh, this is not what I need. This is not enough. So you go back in the store. You ask the clerk, ah, thank you for the love. But I, now I need some joy. Can you give me some joy, please? And the clerk says, all right, I'm going to go get you some joy. Goes in the back, gets the joy, give you the joy. You go out, you go out jumping in joy. You're like, ah, I got my joy, I got my joy. And then a little while goes by, like, ah, you know what? This is not enough. This is not what I need. So you go back to the store again, and then you ask uh, for some peace. You get it, and then you go away, and you go back, say, that's not what I need. Now you need some peace. Now you need some patience. Now you need some provision. Well, well instead of doing that, instead of piecemealing what you need, Instead of giving you what you need piece by piece, he gives it to you all at the same time. He gives you Christ. And in Christ, everything that you ever needed, that you need right now, and that you ever will need is in Christ. Lord have mercy. I need y'all to see this. I need you to see this. And then watch what he does. When the need shows up, y'all don't hear this word tonight. He gives you the provision before the need shows up. When the need shows up, my God, that's when he becomes what you need. Oh, my God. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you tonight? Everything you need. So, so let me take you back. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14. God tells Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let the people go. And, and Moses says, well, God, how, am, how are they going to know that it was you that sent me? God said, tell them I am that I am. Lord, have mercy. I am that I am sent you. Now, when we read that verse, we don't read it right. We don't read it right. Because in the, in the Hebrew, that phrase, I am that I am, it means, it means I am what I will be. <laughs> that's what it means it means it means that i am or i'll become whatsoever i will become so let me give you a different way of looking at it then we're gonna land the plane tonight all right when he says i am that i am the right way to read that phrase when you when you look it up and it says i will be what i will be or i will become whatsoever i will become the right way to look at that phrase i am that i am here's how you look at it i am that I am. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I am that. I am. So you got to separate the first three words from the second two words. All right. I am that. I am what? I am whatever you need me to be when you need me to be it, honey. Lord have mercy. If you need a job, I'm a job. Good God. If you need peace, I'm peace. If you need joy, I'm joy. If you need me to lift your spirit, I am a lifter. Whatever you need, I am that. I am. <laughs> Is this blessing anybody besides me tonight? Good God almighty. Somebody just, just raise your hand and say, I am that. I am. Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. That's how I want you to see. That's how I want you to look at it. That's how you need to see who God is. He has given you every spiritual blessing in Christ. So you have the blessing already. My God. You have the access already. And you have the anointing that's living in your heart. Everything you need is in Jesus. Psalm 16 and 11. Write that down in your notes. Psalm 16 and 11. It says... Um, uh, 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 that at his, at his right hand, let me read it. Let me go to it. Let me go to it. Uh, sometimes I like to just go ahead and read, read it for you. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. I didn't mean to holler at you tonight, but I start getting excited when I teach the word. Psalm 16, number 11. Lord have mercy. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. Do y'all see this? And at thy right hand lord have mercy who's at the right hand y'all <laughs> jesus is at the right hand at the right hand there are pleasures forevermore that simply means everything you possibly need is through the access that the name of jesus gives you 
I hope y'all are seeing this today. I hope y'all are seeing this today. You have access to everything that you ever could possibly need in Christ. <laughs> and Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. And through him, through him, God gives you access to the power of the Spirit of God. My God, do y'all see this? In Christ Jesus, you have it. So I'm here to tell you that you might have some needs right now. You might have some needs that will show up in the future, but you already have the answer already inside of you because you have Christ in your heart. You already got the answer. It's already there. <laughs> Christ is the anointing of Jesus. It's not Jesus' last name. I don't ever want you all to think that Christ is Jesus' last name ever again. <laughs> ever again. That's not his last name. That is his anointing. That's the access that, that you have. Let's end it right here. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Some of you all know what this is. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians comes before Ephesians. Galatians chapter 5, look at verse 22, verse 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they, uh-oh, they that are Christ. Do y'all see that? Verse number 24. Have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And if we live in the spirit, let us also, what? Walk in the spirit. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? <laughs> this is the access. Uh, I'm sorry, this is what the access and the anointing produces it, it produces this fruit right here when you have access to the power that jesus has through his name this is what it will produce love joy peace long suffering goodness meekness temperance self-control it'll produce that that's what it produces he is that i am that <laughs> i am y'all got that oh that's so good right there i am that I am what? Joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness. He's that everything you could possibly need. And when you function in Christ, if we have the power of the Spirit, then let us walk in the power of the Spirit. God wants us to know him, people of God, intimately. He wants us not just to know him in theory, not just in name only, but he wants you to have the power that he used. He left us. He said, greater work shall you do. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Y'all, uh, let's turn there. Let's turn there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Oh, I got three minutes. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm done. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down, here it is again, at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, people of God, I think you learned something tonight. I hope you did. Jesus is on the right hand of Jesus, the man. That's who, that's who Stephen saw. Jesus, the man, is on the right hand of the Father. And through his name, the Bible says he is our, he is our advocate. Or the better way to say that is he is our lawyer. My God, my God, my God. Anybody glad you got a lawyer? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Amen. What you were, the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brother. So the devil is accusing us. He's going before God telling him, let me tell you what Andrew did. Let me tell you what Andrew said. Y'all just put your name where I put my name. Let me tell you what they did. Let me tell you what they didn't do. And guess what? The devil is right. But Jesus is our advocate. He is our lawyer. And he's telling God, Lord, don't give them what they deserve. <laughs> I already paid the price. And God accepts the sacrifice of Jesus 
And because of the blood, somebody help me preach right now. Y'all give me 30 seconds to preach. Because of the blood, he passes over us. We all have our personal Passover. Lord, have mercy. Because of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. Anybody glad about that? <laughs> Anybody glad about that? I'm glad about that. So Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us. He's praying for us. He's praying that our faith won't fail. He's praying that we'll walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And he gives us the Holy Spirit, the power, the same power that he used. He gives it to us. And through his name, we have access to that power. It's Christ that lives in our hearts. So people of God, we have been blessed. We have been blessed. Blessed be the God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. My time is gone. I'll get into this heavenly places thing next week. I'll, I'll go to that. I'll go to that next week. Let me open up for some questions. We got, we got time for a couple questions. It's 8 o'clock on the dot. I'm stopping. Questions, questions, comments, gold nuggets, food for thought, special suggestions, or the like. Let me hear you. <clears throat> Unmute yourselves before you speak so I can hear you if there are any questions. We'll just take a couple minutes to do some questions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that must be Elder Deborah. <laughs> She's giving us that blessing on blessing on blessing on blessing right there. Lord have mercy. All right. Any questions? Come on. Ask me some questions, y'all. If anything is confusing, anything doesn't make sense, anything uh, that you need to know, Anything you're curious about? Anybody, anybody. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Nobody got no questions? Sister Tiffany Gray, you ain't got no questions? Yes. <laughs> Lord have Sister Paula, you ain't got no questions? I have a question. You have a question? So then what is keeping us from accessing? Is it because we, we don't need it? Um, or what is hindering us from accessing what we need? The Bible says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no one that calls upon the name of Jesus that doesn't have access to this power. But as I read right. for you in the scripture, we got to walk in the spirit. If Christ is in our hearts, mm -hmm. then we've got to trust the power that he gives us. Let me tell you something. There's some people on this line that will testify that we have been in some very low places and we have called on the name of Jesus. <laughs> and that name has given, Lord have mercy, somebody saying, yes, yes, yes. I see you, Mama Glory. Amen. We have called on the name of Jesus and that name has given us access to a power that kept us from going over the edge. Lord have mercy. That name has given us access to a power that has provided provisions when we needed it. That name has given us access to a power that has let, allowed us to be able to forgive people when we couldn't forgive them. That name gives us access. There is nobody that can call on that name that won't have access to that power. Amen, amen, amen. So to answer your question, there is no one, there is no one that, that God will not allow to access that power when you access it through the name of Jesus. Now, you can't access that power without Jesus. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you can't access it if you don't come in the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus is what God recognizes. The name of Jesus is the one who paid the price. The name of Jesus is your lawyer. You've got to have representation. Come on, somebody. You've got to be represented and covered by the blood because the blood is what God recognizes. Amen. So to answer your question, there is no one. There is no one. Uh, my, my grandfather used to say, nobody has passed backsliding station. <laughs> there is nobody that God will not give access to this power when you come in the name of Jesus. Any other questions? Sister Barry, no questions? No questions, no questions, no questions. All right, all right, all right, all right. Lady Ebony, no questions? Lord have mercy. So, okay. I do kind of have this thing that I've been going through the last few days where 
I'm interested in a higher level, um, a spiritual awakening. Yeah. And so I know that it's more to, to life here in this dimension. Yeah. And, and, and I, I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start my journey. I'm researching things online. Um, in addition to the Bible, what other ways can we reach that higher level? In addition uh, to praying, in addition to fasting, in addition to just being in the word and praying in the spirit, it has to be more than that. And so I'm just trying to figure out is what other ways can you recommend for us to, to reach a higher level? So, so tell me why you feel like there's got to be more, when you say there's more than that, to get, give, me more, give me more on that, please. So I'm hearing that there's different dimensions in the yeah. spiritual world. There's supposed to be nine dimensions is, is what I learned earlier. Okay. Um, how do I know what dimension I'm in when I'm speaking in my spiritual tongue or when I'm just in prayer or when I'm, I know, when I'm led to share something or a revelation hit me from reading a scripture in the Bible? This makes no sense, probably, but <laughs> okay. I'm all I, I, I see what you're saying. I think I think your question is um, is beyond this particular particular lesson, but uh, okay. we can certainly spend some time offline and we can talk about that. And okay. uh, I can give you a little bit more insight to your actual question. But related to uh, the spiritual blessing in Christ, everything that that we that that we will experience in this spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. It'll be because uh, we tap into the power that comes through us through Jesus in Christ. It'll be because of that power. That power, it, it will take you to new levels. It absolutely will take you to higher levels. And you'll, you'll, you'll get to know. The good thing about, about Jesus and about God is you can never exhaust him. <laughs> mm. you, you can go to one level, and then you can experience him on a higher level. Then you can experience yeah. him on a higher level. So it's not like, let me get to the nine levels and then that's it. There's, there is no exhausting. There is no, the Bible says there's no searching of his understanding. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're going to go higher and higher and higher. Uh, one, one scripture says you'll go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Okay. So you're gonna, the more you know him, the more knowledge you have about him, the more intimate you become with him, the higher you will go. The higher you will go. The higher you will go. And, uh, and it really all, all boils down to just how much of yourself you allow God to have. Okay. That's what it really boils down to. Um, Bishop? Can yes. I kind of piggyback on what she's asking. And if I'm, um, I, I thought when somebody was telling me about Buddha that they had nine levels, but I always saw God is taking us from glory to glory. I didn't I didn't realize that there were are they are there nine dimensions uh, when we look at Christianity or those other religions because I always thought that He took us where we needed to be higher and higher in Him. Well, I, what she's referring to when she talks about nine dimensions, okay. um, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a complicated uh, subject to address related to this lesson. Okay. But just, but just know this. The basic answer is there are higher levels that you can go in in God, that you can go to in God. All right? When you, when you get saved, you're on one level. But the more, the more you mature, it's, it's just like living life, guys. Think about your life. You, you are at a higher maturity level now than you were when you were a teenager or when you were an adolescent or when you were a young adult. The things that you know at 40, 50, 60, and 70 that you didn't know at 10, 20, and 30. Right. All right. So you, so you, go, you go higher in him. You go higher in him. You, you, you go to deeper levels in him. Um, the scripture is there, that, lo, that logio, that logos is there to, mm. to give us stories of faith, to get our faith to a high level where we can handle and receive the rhema word of God. Yes. The rhema word okay. of God. The okay. scripture gets your faith uh, conditioned. And then when God speaks to you directly, your faith is in a position where you can obey him 
upon what he says to you. Um, Bishop, I think I think that's it. You know what you just said that the level of faith as your faith gets stronger. And yes. Like I said as you get to know him, as you as you do all of those things that she named, and even in answer to uh, what Sister Paula was asking, it's our faith, it's our trust, and like you said, the Christ in us. First, recognizing that He's in us, and the, the the stronger our faith becomes, which is like you said, the more we give of ourselves. So I'm just you know saying again what you said, but I believe that that is it more than, you know, the glory, the glory from faith to faith. Yeah. Amen. And the scripture speaks of this script. It says this, it says that we are to know him in the power of his resurrection, but also in the fellowship of his suffering. In the fellowship of his suffering. We all want the resurrection part, but we don't want the suffering part. <laughs> Amen. So, so when you say, Lord, take me to a new level in you. Mm. Honey, Amen. if I was you, I would just Amen. enjoy the level I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lord, but but Bishop, go, is that a question that we... I'm sorry. When, when you go to another level, it's not just another level of power, but it's also another level of burden. Lord, uh -oh. have mercy. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. And that's what you got to see. Jesus, he became our perfect sacrifice because he operated in power, but he also operated in great burden. The Bible says when he was in that garden, he, he, the sweat was coming out like drops of blood. That's how much pressure he was under. So when you ask God, Lord, take me to another level, you better know what's coming with it. New levels, new devils. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just, I'm enjoying the level that I'm on until God says it's time for me to go. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Let me shut it down here. So therefore, bitch, we should only be moving to another level as God leads us to another level, not actually going, trying to go to another level ourselves. Uh, that's the pace I would recommend. <laughs> now, if you just hunger, if you just hunger and thirst for righteousness and you just want more of God, Honey, go for it. But before you do that, make sure you accomplish everything on this level that you're supposed to accomplish. And when it's time, when it's time, you will know in your spirit when it's time. You will know. You will know. The, the Holy Spirit will prompt you. He will, he will literally call you higher. Lord, have mercy. Okay. <laughs> he will call you up. He will say, come up here. Come up hither. As the scripture said, come, come up, come up higher. I got something I want to show you. I got something I want to use you to do. I got something I want to say to you. So if he's calling you higher, answer the call. Amen. If, if, he, if he's not calling you higher, that means there's more to accomplish on this level right here. And so therefore, when he calls us higher, we shouldn't be scared of the new devils that we could encounter. Nope. You know why? Because he's going to grace you for it. <laughs> Whatever level okay. he calls you to, he's going to give you the grace to deal with what comes on that level. Because you know that that the new devil's things is the thing that make you chicken. You go, oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> let, me, so. let me tell you how, let me have to tell you just how true this is. You could be on one level with God and you could have, let's, let's just say, uh, let's just say you have, uh, I'm just going to use an example. Let's say you have $100,000 in debt on the level that you're on. And God calls you up to the next level, and on the next level, you got a million dollars in debt. If you go to where God is calling you to, even though there's more debt on the next level, you'll have more peace, and you'll, you'll be able to carry that easier than you were able to carry the 100,000. Hey, Amen. Because wherever God calls you, he graces you to be able to function there. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so the, 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 the goal should be, God, help me to be where you want me to be. Because <laughs> when, when I'm where you want me to be, that's where my grace is. That's where my help is. Lord have mercy. That's where I access the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the empowerment, the enablement. 
when you get in the will. What did Jesus say in that garden? He said, Lord, I don't want to do this, but not my will. Your will be done. So when you are in the will of God, Lord have mercy, you are safer mm, behind a spider web than you are behind Fort Knox. Lord have mercy. You have more enablement with no weapons than you do with an AKA-47. <laughs> it's all about being in the will of God. All about being in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Minister Brown, how did I do? Lord have mercy. Is she there? Is she there? All right. All right. Praise God. All right. Let's close it out. Let's close it out. Let's close it out. I hope y'all got something out of this word tonight and out of this message tonight. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are prioritizing the word of God. Um, Let's do this. Let's do this. Elder Charlene. Um, Sorry about that, on. Bishop. <laughs> Sorry. You, you know how technology is. It's wonderful when it works and when it doesn't. <laughs> Praise God. How did I do tonight? <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. I am uh, loving it. Appreciate Praise it. God. All the Praise way here in Texas. Amen. 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 Glory to God. All right, people of God. Um, Elder Charlene is going to give us our announcements uh, really quickly. What's going on in life of the church. Um, I want to encourage us. Uh, to be a blessing to uh, the house of God, to support the house of God. Uh, we always give an opportunity for giving uh, God's tithe and our offerings. Uh, you all know the giving portals, you know uh, the electronic means, and certainly if you are a person that mails it in, you can do that as well. But let's support the house of God and let's do what the word of God teaches us to do, which is to give. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Let's be a blessing to the house of God. Tonight, uh, for those of us that return God's tithe on a weeknight, let's be mindful to do that. And for those of us that give offering uh, that's in our heart, let's do that to be a support and a blessing to the house of God. Even though we're not in the physical building, uh, we still got to keep everything flowing and moving. And uh, we do that through the obedience of the people of God. Um, <clears throat> the tithe is a kingdom tax, and it goes to take care of the matters pertaining to the kingdom. Amen. So that's what we use it for. Uh, uh, and, we, and we have strong financial uh, stewardship. We thank God for that. We always have and always will. So we give God praise for that. Elder Charlene, quickly give us our announcements and then we'll be gone for the night. All right. To please keep Sister Tina Wimbers in prayer. She lost her father on this week. So we ask that you keep her in prayer. We ask that you keep Sister Brenda in prayer. She's in the hospital, and we ask that you keep her in prayer. All graduates, if you're graduating or or if you're graduating, please call the church. Uh, we need all this information by Sunday, May 31st. I won't reiterate that one. All men, you will have a Zoom meeting on Saturday, June 13th at 9 a.m. We ask that all men watch the last dance centers on ESPN if you have any questions. We ask that you call Reverend A, and we ask that you continue to be a part of our weekly Bible study. It's been real good. On this Sunday, thank God, we're having the 10,000 tongues, and that will be at our 9 a.m. service. We ask that you like and share. And also, if you'd like to be a part of the KZX project, if you are still working and you want to help someone that's not working, we ask that you call the church. And that is it, Bishop. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this is the best one is to thank everybody for all the gifts, the phone calls, the texts, the cards. Um, he celebrated another birthday. He's been a pastor for 13 years. He's been a bishop for one year. And we're asking if you can give him $125. If not, give as much as you can. This man of God always pours out to us. And we want to celebrate our bishop. God bless. Thank you, Sister Charlene. Uh, I really, pre Elder Charlene, I'm sorry, I appreciate what you um, do for us and for our ministry, for our church. <clears throat> and uh, I want to piggyback on what she said. I want to thank everyone who took time and, and uh, was in your heart to be a blessing to me for um, my pastoral anniversary and for my birthday. Thank you to everybody who participated in that. I don't take it for granted. I do my best to serve the body of Christ with excellence and um, with my whole heart. So thank you so much for remembering me 
and uh, it helps me to make it just a little bit further. So I thank you all for your kindness and for your gestures, your cards, your kind words, your gifts. I thank you so much for that. All right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to be out of here. Let's not forget to give. We'll sow as we go, and uh, we'll be back on. So for Sunday, let me mention this too. For Sunday, we're having 10,000 tongues. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to move our 10,000 tongue service to the afternoon at 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. So we'll have our regular virtual service at 9, and then we'll have our 10,000 tongues uh, praise fest at 4. All right. I thought we would do it that way because it kind of gave us a little bit more time to not have to constrict and, you know, all that kind of stuff on Sunday morning. We'll have our regular Sunday morning service at 9 a.m. virtually, and then we'll have our 10,000 tongues at 4 p.m. So the flyer is going to start circulating this week. So once you get the flyer on Facebook or electronically, make sure you start to circulate it. And we want to get as many worshipers in the virtual room as possible. And we are just going to give God some uh some un, un some un, uninhibited praise um praise unplugged amen glory to god we just take this take the lid off take the stops off we're just going to give god glory like he deserves amen because he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings <laughs> hallelujah amen so we give god all the praise father we thank you for this time of study of your word tonight bless us as we go we thank you that you have blessed us with with every blessing in spiritual in spiritual places in heavenly places so we give you glory and we give you the honor and we give you praise that you are a literal blessing and out of your out of your atmosphere you speak blessing to us and we have everything that we need in christ so we give you praise in jesus name we thank you in jesus name i pronounce the blessings of god over the people of god in jesus name we have access to everything that the anointing provides and allows us to have. Everything that you have, we have in Jesus' name. We thank you. We glorify you. We praise you. Let us have sweet sleep tonight and let us bring us back together at the appointed time. Father, I pray over every hurting family, every, every bereaved family, every sick and shut-in person. We pray that you'll lift them up and send comfort, send your Holy Spirit, send your angels to minister to us in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. Continue to provide for the needs of your church, of your body, oh God. Oh God, this is your body. This is your bride. So provide for yourself, oh God, that ram that we need to be able to take care of everything that's necessary. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. Most of all, we thank you for how you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a blessed night. I love y'all. Everybody. Good night. God All bless right. you. God bless.